People frequently ask me if my daughter knows she's adopted. They tend to ask in front of her, <laughs> using stage whispers which make me long to point out that she's six. She's not deaf. <laughs> it's odd to even consider the notion that when I was young, parents decided when and how and whether to tell their children they were adopted. It's baffling to me how common it was for children to have this news thrust upon them at five or eight, or if the rumblings around junior high were true, even as old as 13. Thankfully, things have changed. The majority of adopted children grow up always just knowing their story, rather than something silenced and secret. It's told over and over again in the same fashion biological children ask to hear their birth story repeated. Adopted children ask the same questions each time and find the same comfort in hearing the answers recited the exact same way each time the story is retold. I'll never forget when we got your referral pictures, our story begins. Your dad was working late and I could not wait for him to come home so I could open the email. I barely waited till he got home. I sat on the couch, computer on lap, finger hovering over the word open. So the moment he walked in the house, I could click and you'd be there instantly and forever a part of our family. And then, tell me about the necklace, mama. And then, after we sent everyone we knew your perfect picture and told them what we decided to name you, I had a necklace made. Right then, that night, thank God for online shopping. <laughs> I made a tiny charm with your picture on it and vowed to wear it until you were home with us forever. And the Buddha, tell me how someone thought I was the Buddha. <laughs> I wore the necklace from the moment it arrived and I never took it off. Not to shower, not when I got fancy, never. The days dragged and the red tape wrapped around your adoption <coughs> file and the necklace remained around my neck. Most days I forgot I even had it on as I absentmindedly rubbed and fiddled with the piece of silver until the picture was there, but it was smeary and fingerprinted. And the Buddha mama, that part. And one day I was waiting impatiently in a grocery line, rubbing and fiddling and rubbing and fiddling, when a woman turned to me and said, that's the most lovely Buddha necklace I believe I have ever seen. <laughs> and you didn't want to embarrass her, did you mama? I didn't, baby girl. Your eyes were closed and the picture was tiny and I kept you with me for strength and calm. In a way, you were my Buddha. So I just smiled and said, thank you. <laughs> Tell me about Guatemala, Mama. Did you go there and did you look around and say, I'll take the one with the black hair? <laughs> <laughs> do you love movies as I do, baby girl? Are you afraid of thunder the way I was when I was a girl? Yes. Do you love to dance and sing and write as I do, baby girl? I do, mama, I do. You were meant to be my girl, and I was meant to be your mom. Tell me about the first time we met, mama. Tell me about the blankies. You were tiny, baby girl, teeny tiny, and your foster mom had wrapped you in more blankets than I had seen in a lifetime. <laughs> Tell me how excited you were, mama, about how you held me. With all the words in the world, there isn't one that describes how excited I was. I unwrapped you, and I unwrapped you, and I held you, and I held you. Tell me about how you had to leave me, mama. Tell me about the crying in Texas and coming back for me. Tell me how you came back for me. I did, baby girl. I treasured our visits, and I was grateful we could visit, and I hated our goodbyes. I cried big, deep sobs from way in the bottom of my belly, from a place I didn't know I had, from a place marked baby girl. And then you came back, and then I came back. I grew tired of waiting, and I longed to be with you, so I brought my stuff, and I brought your stuff, and I came back to stay. And we waited together. And we counted the weeks, and we measured the months, and we unwound the red tape until finally 
until finally I could come to Texas and be home? Yes, baby girl, until you could finally come to Texas and be home. I live a very public life, a very transparent life. I'm a professional blogger, and I let it all hang out online, the good and the bad, in a decidedly open fashion. I don't share my daughter's adoption story online because I feel very strongly it's her story to tell. Because of this fact, people frequently ask me if my daughter knows she's adopted. She knows she's adopted. She knows her story. And maybe, someday, if you're very good and very patient and ask the right questions at the proper time, she'll share it with you, too. Thank you.